Right, so a little update on our International 414. Uh, that's an A414, this one here, not a B414. So when we bought it home, the engine was locked up. So we loaded on the trailer, bought it home, ripped the head off, only to find the first two cylinders full of water. On closer inspection, Cylinder one was knackered. That would require a new piston, a new sleeve. Cylinder two may be salvageable. The head, however, is totally rat shit. Cylinder one and cylinder two on the head um, has eaten all the cast out around the valves and there's simply nothing there to cut the valves into. Being a cast head, there isn't going to be any welding, especially inside the combustion chamber. Uh, so we've gone to plan B. Here we have a 186 Holden engine that uh, I bought from a guy down the road. Now this one has some interesting history. This is actually a local motor and I know that because Prosser Power 20 years ago used to be an engine reconditioner. So the story is this, the engine was reconditioned and put back in the vehicle and done about 70,000 Ks and then the vehicle was rear-ended, written off, so the motor came out. So apparently it's a good running motor. Now my concern was the drop in torque and horsepower because we're going from a diesel to a gasoline engine. However. It turns out not to be the case. So I jumped online, had a look at the specs for each motor, and they are as follows. For the International A414, 40 brake horsepower at 2000 RPM with 105 foot pounds of torque. For this red motor here is 126 brake horsepower. And at 3,000 RPM, we get 220 foot-pound of torque. So we've tripled our horsepower and over double the torque with this engine. So this is actually going to be a power upgrade, not a downgrade, for this old 414. Uh, it's also going to be the hardest adaption I have ever done and I've done many. We've bolted V8 motors onto Volkswagen gearboxes for beach buggies. Uh, these motors here often put into Land Rovers, which I did with mine, made my own adapter kit, worked fine. Uh, the problem we have here, I've got the flywheel off of the Holden motor sitting on the input shaft. Fortunately enough, the clutch plate had the same spline. Um, so this is where it's got to go to pick up on the spline correctly and our input shaft to be inside our carrier bearing, which is another story altogether. We'll get into that as well. So the problem I've got, that's sitting there like yay, um, and the distance from the flywheel crank face um, to the bell housing face is exactly the same as the face here on the crank to the face of the engine block which leaves us no room to put an adapter plate between so i'm going to have to make a stepped adapter plate which means we'll make one plate probably out of uh, six or eight mil, probably six mil because this engine will be solid mounted onto the frame we've got to build. One plate to bolt onto here and then we have to make another plate pick up on here that gets welded on the back side or the front side of the plate that's getting bolted to the engine. This will put the engine flywheel combination in the exact spot it needs to be. Uh, of course, when we do this, we're going to lose our PDO drive because it is a 
split shaft and I'm probably gonna drop this. Oh, no, you're not. Right. Two separate shafts. So that's the gearbox drive. That's the PDO drive. We're going to be losing that. I did have the thought of bolting the original um, tractor's flywheel to this engine, but that is not going to happen. Uh, also, the other problem we have, um, the flywheel bearing is, of course, imperial. But the tractor shaft is metric. So I've got the closest bearing I could find that fits snug in the flywheel, which is imperial bearing. And I'm going to have to make up a small sleeve push into the bearing to be the correct size for our input shaft. Another interesting thing happened when I pulled this tractor apart. We'll go over here and have a look. So this is our original pressure plate from our tractor. You can see we've got our PDO drive plate there. Um, we've got a clutch plate here. Someone has split this tractor and put a new clutch plate in there. And can, that's how it was when I pulled it out. And uh, I got a bit of a surprise when I pulled the pressure plate off and the clutch plate out and went to undo the bolts. Can anyone see what's wrong here? This is how it was reassembled. So that is the pressure plate. That is one of the bolts. Someone split the tractor, put a new clutch plate in it, and put it in upside down. So um, I would say they've started it up, going to use the clutch, not so happy, and parked it out in the paddock. But bugger it, we're going to buy a new tractor. That's the way it should go up. But whoever replaced the clutch had it up that way, and all the shock spring carriers were rubbing on the flywheel bolts. So I would say they uh, went to all that trouble to put a new clutch in it, and uh, they've used the tractor. When the clutch plate started to wear down a little bit, still got plenty of life left in it, uh, the bolts started to rub. Would have made a hell of a noise. The clutch wouldn't have been very good at all. And uh, the tractor's just been parked up. So, that's uh, our update so far. So we're going to have triple the horsepower, double the torque, uh, of course, higher RPM, but we just use a lower gear in the tractor because it's got plenty of them. Eight, to be precise. Four high, four low. We are going to lose our PDO, as I said, but I'm not too worried about that. I was thinking of, because this shaft here is solid on bearings, and this one is floating, I was going to machine a ring, push it in there, and then weld this to this shaft, but I think because our clutch is much smaller, um, it's not going to like driving the tractor plus any PDO implements, so we're going to lose the PDO. Uh, which is not a great deal because I'm only going to uh, use it for disking, towing uh, discs, tines, that sort of thing. And it's basically just a fun project. It's not really going to be a working tractor. So uh, that's where we're at. We've got to make a bit of a tricky adapter plate here, or two, and weld them together. Um, the head is offset about eight mil from the face of our um, motor, the gearbox face. So that there is going to be enough to just sit right on the edge of our bell housing here. We may even do a little bit of grinding, but I don't think we're going to have to. So that's our update so far. Um, thought I'd bring you an update. I didn't want to just, uh, and grab the tractor and then find out the motor shagged and leave it uh, I'd like to keep you updated on what's going on so that's what's going on we're going to put this motor in it which should make this tractor quite exciting with three times the horsepower 
All right, guys, uh, we will keep you updated. This is a bit of a long-term project. There's going to be other ones in between this build, but this will be a long-term build, and uh, we'll keep you updated with our progress as we get along.